Well, hello, everyone. My name is Jack Geisert. Welcome to our town hall meeting for Safety for Nonprofits. I'm the founder and president of Safety for Nonprofits. We're joined by a number of our uh, volunteers today. Uh, thank you again for that. If you can please advance. Uh, the next slide shows the agenda for today's meeting, and uh, hopefully there'll be enough time for open discussion and uh, questions and answers at the end. Uh, just from a housekeeping standpoint, um, if you can please uh, mute yourself unless you're um, speaking. And um, also, if you have questions, we're really looking forward to uh, input uh, from those on the call, especially in the area of if you have ideas or, or have needs for uh, helping you connect with nonprofits and charities out in your community. If you need tools, if you need help, please put it into the chat. Stephen Mazeros, uh, who will be speaking in today's uh, meeting, uh, will be monitoring that chat and will also respond at various times uh, to, the, to the input from the chat. So really today's meeting is a, a call to action. Uh, we uh, you know, certainly wanna thank you. We have more than 160 volunteers. Uh, currently we have seven nonprofits that we're working with. So what we're trying to do is, is increase the number of charities that we're helping. So we're gonna talk, really that's the main theme um, of today's meeting, how to get started. So, you know, perhaps you're a seasoned consultant and, and there's no problem getting started, but perhaps you're in a different role in the occupational health and safety area. So we're gonna talk about that. In particular, we have uh, a number of case studies, uh, our Arizona team, Colorado, and um, out of New York, we have some case studies that are gonna describe the work that we're doing and also, how did we get started? And we're, the reason we're sharing this is for people who don't, you know, perhaps need some examples or inspiration on how to get started. And then um, towards the latter half on the right-hand side, you'll see volunteer tools. We're really trying to put tools in your hands so that you can deliver services. Steven Mazeros will be speaking to this. Uh, our partner, Wombat Software, uh, we're starting to use that internally, and we'll describe the tools that you can use as a, um, as a consultant with S4NP in the future. We're going to also review the financial status, um, and we are self-funded at this point, um, so we're going to make a donation request. Uh, this is the end of the year, so get ready for that. And then open questions and answers. Okay, next slide. So again, our focus areas uh, for safety for nonprofits is to deliver services to the charities in our community. That's our purpose. And um, our purpose as a leadership team, myself, Stephen, Sharon, Nancy, others um, on the leadership team is to help the volunteers, the 160 volunteers go out, knock on the door, boots on the ground, help the charities in their community be better and safer. And then another focus area is to increase our reach. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, we've made a number of important inroads with partnerships. Uh, and um, this is really how we're gonna grow and sustain our organization. And um, again, I mentioned the um, uh, raising, you know, keeping our, our doors open. The majority of our fund of our expenditures are for uh, purchasing professional liability insurance. So no one is paid, everyone's a volunteer. Okay. So hi, I'm uh, Sharon Schindel. I'll uh, take over from Jack for a little bit. Uh, I am uh, both the Arizona team lead and I'm also currently working as a Encore fellow with Safety for Nonprofit, working to kind of improve our uh, volunteer onboarding process and uh, and our other uh, documentation processes. And so really our first call to action is to let you know that really you are empowered to contact a nonprofit and propose work. Um, don't wait uh, for us to come up with a long list of nonprofits uh, that might need you because we don't actually have that list. Um, we think that nonprofits out there really need our services and the ones we've worked with have been very appreciative. Um, as you'll see later on, we've got a few testimonials, but the real 
thing we're asking everybody to do is to go and engage with a client and propose work. So go out and contact a nonprofit today. Here's Jack. He says, get ready to volunteer, right? So, I mean, this is really what we're talking about today. So we'd like everybody to share in the chat during this course of this uh, uh, Zoom meeting, really how you could connect with a nonprofit, what you can do to go out today. Well, you know, do you know one that you're already working with? Um, do you have a friend that works with a nonprofit? Or maybe you just uh, Google nonprofits in your area and how you could go find one of them and, and propose that. And we've got some tools for you. We've got brochures, we've got a web page, um, so you don't look like you're just coming in and not uh, you know, you know, offering something. And it's really important to reassure them that what we're offering is professional and free services, that there's no hook that we're later on coming out to them and saying, hey, I'm not, we want you to pay us. So how would you get started with volunteering? Uh, first, you yourself, if you have not already, need to complete our orientation and sign our code of conduct, and we're going to go about that, uh, go on about that in a little bit more detail later. Then you go off, try to identify a nonprofit in your area, and approach them. Start really small, so you know don't come and say, "Hey, we're going to revamp your entire safety process. Well, everything you're doing is wrong. It's going to cost you a million dollars in equipment." Start really small, suggest maybe a one-time walkthrough with them. A lot of times those folks already know where their risks are. Uh, or maybe a, a training class, maybe something as simple as uh, fall prevention or slips or trips or, or just a general how do you report safety incidents. Um, and again, we've got some tools to help you. We've got an existing safety 101 presentation and we're gonna be working on more things like that going forward. Uh, or maybe they need one written procedure, how to train new people when they come in, how to deal with batteries, something. So it's just something small. And then you just develop a brief draft of scope of work. And again, we've got templates available for folks. Once you've kind of got a, an agreement with the nonprofit, you want to be sure you're contacting your safety for nonprofit authorizer. So that's the either an executive committee member or a state lead. And just review that scope of work with them and complete our go, no go matrix. And that makes sure that we're doing work that's within our scope of capabilities, what's covered by our insurance. And maybe that's another opportunity for some peer review. Uh, maybe you notice that what they need is forklift tra safety training, but you're not actually the forklift safety training expert. We can help connect you with somebody else, even virtually, who could help you uh, with that specific aspect of the volunteering. And then once you're authorized, if you need to recruit additional volunteers and go forth and deliver services. All right, so we're going to talk about some examples of recent volunteers and actions. And we're gonna start with one that I was involved with in Arizona. Um, this is an organization called Arizona Strut, which is students recycling uh, technology and they have about 10 employees, many volunteers, and they are involved in recycling technology. They receive literal tons of electronic equipment and, and computers every week. Um, and those are dumped into these nice big uh, boxes or carried in on forklifts. Um, and we had an opportunity to bring two safety for nonprofit volunteers in. We did two uh, site visits. Uh, uh, for instance, you know, one of the things we learned is it's important to tell them that we want to come on a day when they are actually operating because they thought we should come on a quiet day so we would have time to talk. But as, as health and safety professionals, we know the key information that's there is really when they're running. So you can really learn a lot by asking them about that. And, and then the other thing we learned a lot was just asking them where they thought the risks were. And, and, and really, we didn't reveal to them things they didn't know. We were just able to put those things in um, a risk ranked fashion and really you know, give them an opportunity to figure out what to work on. Um, so we ended up creating a report, as I said, with what their continuous improvements are. And then specifically, they asked us for help in developing a lithium ion battery handling and storage procedure. So altogether, that volunteer effort uh, took us about 16 hours with the time to come, having a little bit pre-meetings before, working on the report and then having our closing meeting with the with the client. Um, so that's uh, our example. Now I'm going to turn this over to uh, Jim Colbert. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Um, my case study is MESA Sharing, which is an acronym for medical equipment 
aid, medical equipment supplies and aid sharing, uh, really cool organization. What they do is collect surplus medical equipment, load them up into Connex boxes and ship them to Africa. Uh, there was a shipment to Namibia in June and, and one scheduled for Uganda here this month. Um, they, they have quite a few assets. They, they have, they're all volunteers, but they do um, own a fork truck and they have um, warehouse facilities. And, uh, you know, when I say they load and handle medical equipment, I thought it was going to be mostly boxes, but it, it's pretty sophisticated. They've got really large uh, x-ray machines that they load and handle. They've got um, really heavy and large medical, you know, like hospital beds. Um, the way I was introduced to them, um, I, well, I'll start by saying Safety for Nonprofits was just an intriguing organization to me as a safety professional in Colorado. And uh, listened in on some calls, tried, tried to think of ways I could help with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which is one that I'm involved with. And, um, you know, I was kind of looking for my opportunities to really help. And serendipitously, my sister and her husband volunteer for Mesa. And I met the president of the organization, um, started asking about what they do. And, and as we talked, uh, the president said, yeah, do you, you're a safety professional. Do you know anything about forklift training, fork truck training? And I, I then introduced them to safety for nonprofits. I uh, am not a trainer myself, but uh, Cassie Braun here in our Colorado group is. And she was able to volunteer quickly and, and get deployed down there uh, to certify these volunteers. Um, I think what I'll say about the scope of the work that Mesa does is, you know, they've got a few what I would call power volunteers and they're there all the, you know, they go weekly, they help with things. They're the ones who were trained on the fork truck, but then they've got just sort of this army of more garden variety volunteers. So on a, on a volunteer day, it is sort of like an anthill of activity right near the fork truck with boxes piled everywhere. And how do we, you know, how do we help affect that was, was kind of my question. So while the fork truck training was important, they also do things like build um, partitions within these conics boxes. They build pallets and palletalize large equipment. It's, there's a lot happening. So we were able to go in and help them with a bit of an onboarding process. Uh, we, we identified a safety coordinator volunteer, um, did a hazard assessment uh, on a volunteer day and where I was, you know, right there with them loading boxes. Uh, and I think, you know, when, when Sharon talks about ways to kind of get involved, heck, just start volunteering and you'll really see what the needs are pretty quickly. Um, help them kind of connect with Granger who, signed an agreement to provide PPE to them and other free equipment. So a lot of these things started to come together. It was fun. Um, I'll say in the future, there are continued opportunities for them around volunteer management platform, like where volunteers can electronically get an orientation. Um, during some of our assessments, we, we identified fall protection training and, and ladder safety as other chances to engage. So this is going to be ongoing into uh, 24 and 25 as this organization continues to do good work. Um, so I, I want to thank, you know, Jeff Stump of Colorado uh, team, Cassie. They just helped me so much in getting the, the safety and health consulting agreement up. All of that was so easy. I felt like I could just dump, jump in without a lot of bureaucracy and help right away. Um, and with that, we have, a vol we have a video now from Aaron Bozel, who is the, uh, president of the organization and Dennis Henry, my brother-in-law, who is now the safety coordinator for the organization. Hi, my name is Aaron Bosel. I'm the president of Mesa Sharing. And uh, we are so thankful to have partnered with you guys uh, for all the help you're, you've given us already. Uh, Mesa started 15 years ago. Uh, back in Oregon, my wife and I went to West Africa. I do ultrasound imaging and I train doctors and uh, train some techs also to do x-ray. I have that background. It changed our lives and uh, we sent our first container within the year to the Ivory Coast and we were hooked. And so we've been going uh, strong for that long. 
our goal is to relieve suffering wherever we can and uh, we've been shipping mainly to Africa. We've been able to affect the lives of about 1.5 million people throughout about eight countries in Africa and uh, we are just very excited about what's happening. We're growing and the opportunities are there and we're just doing whatever we can as all volunteers to uh, help people all over the world. My name is Dennis Henry. I'm a volunteer and safety coordinator for Mesa. We'd like to thank Jim Colbert for hooking us up with safety for nonprofits. Uh, through Jim, uh, we met Cassie Braun, and Cassie uh, graciously drove down to Pueblo West for a training session. Cassie was very well prepared, presented a thorough uh, presentation. After the presentation, we took our written test, we took our dri driving test, and uh, thankfully all four of us passed. Uh, I believe that with Cassie's uh, presentation, we have now pr uh, have, we now have a better safety program in place for all of our volunteers. Again, thank you uh, to Safety for Nonprofits for all you've done for us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aaron. Okay, I think I'm uh, up next. Right, Sharon? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay. Uh, so my name is Nancy Orr. I'm based in uh, rural uh, New York State most of the time. And um, there has been a playhouse here in the Catskills since 1947. Uh, but the building itself was built in 1881. So guess what? It's wooden and it is uh, lacking in fire protection, shall we say. Um, and that that was kind of what uh, drove me to uh, approach them because I had actually been to some presentations, some plays in the uh, in the playhouse. And uh, I would always look up and just wonder how would people get out of here <laughs> if anything went wrong? Um, so I approached the um, I approached the director of the playhouse. Uh, he was a, a fellow I'd known for many, many years. Um, I knew him to be an open person, an outgoing person, as you can imagine, running a, a theater. And um, it, I was so surprised when I first broached uh, this subject with him about how, how would he feel about um, getting a safety review. It turns out, I didn't know this, that he had been an attorney before he took over the playhouse. So he was completely aware of some of the issues that might uh, come up. So uh, that that kind of accelerated the process, and I was I was very glad that I just spoke up. You know that you just sometimes that's all you have to do. And mind you, this is a town of eight hundred people. You will find a nonprofit in your town. I I guarantee it. Um, and uh, I'm looking further afield now because um, uh, now that work has started at the Playhouse, um, I, I think there's there's more to be done. I would just say that the scope of the work I did really kind of focused on three areas. Uh, one was the prop shop, which as you can imagine, is quite a, um, a busy spot. A uh, lot of uh, woodworking equipment, a lot of painting going on, a lot of construction. Uh, this is a playhouse that does about 10 productions over the course of the summer. So there's a, a lot to do. And and what I learned in the uh, in the, uh, the prop shop was that they didn't have a very good understanding about flammable liquid storage. Uh, they did not seem to understand how respirators should be stored, uh, although they were using them. So there was an opportunity there. Uh, the second area that we focused on was set changeover. And you can see from these pictures of what I'm talking about. So between every production, they have to bring down all of the props, the lights, the sound equipment, everything that was associated with the, that production and replace it with the same material, the same kinds of things for the next production. What I didn't realize 
was that these set changeovers start at 6 p.m. and they finish at 1 a.m. the next day. It's a long night, um, but it was a fascinating um, process to see in which situational awareness was extremely important because material is being lowered from overhead, heavy equipment is being moved onto a stage. You have volunteers who are themselves um, actors who are not trained in safety per se, working with technical crews that are a little bit more uh, familiar with procedures. So, so this was a very dynamic situation and uh, it was important to make sure that, that the um, controls were in place there. The third aspect that we looked at, and, and to me was probably the most um, important, was this issue about both fire prevention and fire protection. Uh, as I said, extremely old wooden building, no sprinkler system, not required uh, by the local board, uh, the, the um, planning board or zoning board. And I've, I, I spoke with the uh, building inspector about that. And it turns out that there are dormitory rooms um, also associated with the back of the theater. So not only do you have the public in this big old wooden building, but you also have people living there and working there um, all day, all night. So uh, quite a bit of exposure. So um, the recommendations in terms of how to improve yeah. um, uh, fire detection yes, and, sir. Um, is, is work that is still yes. at uh, it would be helpful if that person would mute so that I am not distracted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, it, it, and one of the things I also learned about theaters <clears throat> is that they can't put smoke detectors in uh, the theater because uh, some of the effects they use to generate um, fog and visual effects would instantly trigger a uh, um, a smoke detector. So they have to work around that uh, business. So um, I have spent some time there, you know, including overnight once. <laughs> uh, I am scheduled to go back uh, next month and start really noodling through some of these uh, fire prevention and fire protection uh, recommendations. And uh, the Playhouse is super interested in continuing this work. Uh, so like I said, small town has something as simple as a performing arts location and uh, all kinds of things happen there that could use um, safety oversight. So that's, that's what I do. Well, thank you, Nancy. Um, I'm going to then now also share a client testimonial, but I realized that Nancy and Jim did a great job describing how they found the, their nonprofit, but I didn't mention that when I talked about mine. Um, in the case of the Arizona Strut organization, they were referred to me by an ex-coworker who was involved with them. So really, you're telling your network that you are involved in safety for nonprofit can result in you hearing about a nonprofit that you might need to help. Uh, here we have a different client testimonial from somebody that we actually started to work with uh, back in 2022. We found them uh, by participating in our local alliance for nonprofits. Uh, most states have some kind of organization where nonprofits uh, can learn about being a nonprofit, can meet other nonprofits, can get training, and uh, just in general uh, participate. And so we reached out to them and became members. And that's how we heard about these folks, which is Heritage Square Park. Um, we started helping them, as I said, in 2022. We did a, a trip fall risk assessment, um, looking at a historic building, uh, several historic buildings that were there and um, indoor and outdoor operations. And then we gave them a written report that you'll hear uh, was really uh, useful for them to justify repairs. And then this year we gave them uh, safety and health training around incident reporting and fall prevention. So now we're just going to hear from Carrie, who is their executive director. Hi, I'm Kari Carlisle. I'm the executive director for Heritage Square Foundation. Heritage Square Foundation is the nonprofit partner of the city of Phoenix in the operation of Heritage Square Park in downtown Phoenix. I did recognize that um, there, there was a need. There was a need to understand um, where we were in terms of safety, especially when it comes to all of these historic buildings 
and um, not just our staff, but so many visitors. And so, um, so we invited Safety for Nonprofits to come out to our space and walk around, and we had uh, great conversations with um, the team there at Safety for Nonprofits, um, and came up with a great plan um, that really met our needs. We did, we had them do a complete uh, trip and fall assessment of the entire park. Um, and now the city of Phoenix is actually going to do a complete repaving project um, at, that will address um, really the vast majority of these trip and fall issues here at the park, which is gonna make a big difference. Um, we've also um, done training for our staff and really, which really, really helps us to understand just the impact of all these everyday little things that we do and how, um, how we can not just be safer, but just recognizing how just normal things that you might think you would do at home are really not that safe. And so, um, so we're doing so much better as a staff. Um, we've got um, better procedures in place and really it's all to thank. We have uh, safety for nonprofits to thank for everything that we've been able to accomplish here at Heritage Square. So um, wanna thank safety for nonprofits for everything. All right, I'm going to turn this over to Stephen now. Yeah, hi. Um, I I just want to say those testimonials um, they, they wow me. Um, they they really do because w when you hear it like that, it just it's so genuine, isn't it? And and you know it's it's not rehearsed. It, these these things are making a difference. Um, the Heritage Square one was pretty interesting because. I remember the discussions that they would have never justified um, the huge project of getting the majority of the facility paved had it not been for kind of formally putting risk assessments together and actually documenting that and presenting it to the city and getting the funding for it. So it, it's just nice to see those success stories. So um, I'm Steve Mizaris. Um, I started in on this uh, almost right from the beginning. Um, uh, Jack uh, um, reached out to me and, and uh, you know, right when we were trying to develop our bylaws, um, he knew that I had some experience with the pharmaceutical supply chain initiative. I see Nancy's on the line today. We work together with that nonprofit. Um, and, and so it was a great opportunity. Um, but it's been a journey, and um, that journey um, started to get complicated. When you see the uptake and the growth that we've gone through um, with volunteers, and I think Jack mentioned we're, we're up over 160. Uh, we've got representation in, I think, over 20, uh, half of the country. I think it was 22 uh, states. There's someone from our organization in 22 different states across the US. Um, early in the beginning, um, we had a, 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 a company reach out to us um, called Wombat, say, uh, Wombat. At that time, they were just called Wombat. Um, they later became Wombat Software. Um, the gentleman saw uh, one of Jack's presentations and, and kind of right away came out and said, I think I can help with this. I did, I did something with software to help organize this kind of an approach for the marine industry. And it might be a fit for you. Um, we worked over the last two years with Wombat. Um, and many of you know that initially we started out on um, the pro bono platform that Google offers to nonprofits. Um, so we're using Gmail, we're using Google folders. Um, they're not very secure. Um, data can easily be corrupted. Um, and, and it's challenging, it's, it's very manual. Um, so 
what we really are pleased and, and, and just now in the middle of transitioning, and many of you would have gotten an email to prompt you to um, start that transition, um, but it also really adds a professional flair to the way we run and operate um, the back office part of what we do. And so Wombat gives us a management system platform. And um, we've now imported all our volunteers in there. It helps us manage those volunteers and onboard them. Um, and, and to complement that, um, Sharon and Jack stepped up, did some recordings. Sharon has put together our own YouTube uh, channel. Um, so what we're really doing is trying to automate our processes and make them as um, seamless as possible, very professional, but um, manageable um, so that we don't have to spend a lot of time doing the admin paperwork and we can do what we want to do is be safety people and help people in the field. And this, this Wombat software really gives us an inroad to that. So we've got our, our new onboarding um, documentation um, and, and videos. Um, and we have our code of conduct, which all of you, many of you have already signed. Unfortunately, um, we were not able to export those. In the past, they were PDFs. We had to scan them, put them in a file. Now you'll be able to sign them right online in, in the Wombat software. Um, and, you know, once you get logged in, so it makes things just so much easier. And it, it gave us a suite of tools um, that, that we can now also move that and share that with the clients. So if we go to the next slide, it, it just really helps us with uh, our position with the liability insurance. So many of you know, um, our biggest challenge is the cost of insurance. And if you're able to prove you've got systems and documentation and things like that, um, it, it, it becomes something that's presentable to the insurance carriers to make you more attractive as a client for them, hopefully getting better rates. Um, and, and so with this platform, we kind of achieve a lot of goals. Um, this is right off our webpage. You can go there afterwards and just, uh, you know, that's at www.s4mp.org. And you can just tap on to uh, the S4MP volunteer tools tab and you'll be able to access these links. The first link will take you to the software. Um, and then it is a small um, video there that teach, shows you in two minutes how to access your code of conduct document, and sign off. Um, we've got a, a, another document there that kind of walks you through um, some of the key features and introduces the software to you. And then the last video um, that, that we just uh, created, it's actually a six minute video. Um, it's really one I, I recommend everybody view because it, it, it shows some of the dynamic ways we can use this uh, software to actually engage clients. And, and that's the key. So we, we now, I know through um, the efforts at Mesa, I think, uh, Sharon and, and the Arizona group will be the first ones um, that will be looking at possibly using the software with a client. But what it does allow with a client is um, you can go through it. You can do your no-go uh, form right online. Um, you can do the contract online. They can upload all their employees. You can push uh, policies to the employees. You can push training to the employees. They can sign off on them right there. It can track whether they did or didn't sign off um, that they've received the training. So it kind of solves that back management system aspects of, of safety um, that, and the documentation needs that we should have in place. So with that, let's we'll, we'll just take a look at the first two minutes of that video. Show you everything you need to know while out in the field. Wombat can be accessed from your web browser on any device, 
And if you don't have service, don't worry. Wombat will store your data and sync everything when you reconnect so you can stay productive no matter where you are. Today, we're going to pretend that we are William the Worker. William just got to the site for the day and logs in by opening his web browser and entering app.wombat.software as the website address. He then enters his email address and password. The top of the screen shows his personalized to-do list showing him only things that matter to him. This includes any outstanding forms, either forms that have been assigned to him or forms that he has saved as drafts, any corrective actions or tasks assigned to him, and any training and certifications he has that require action. The first thing he's going to do today is finish a site inspection checklist. A draft has already been started, which you can see in the forms to-do list. He selects it. You can see that he previously filled in his name, inspection date, and site name. He'll now answer the questions. William notices that Bob isn't wearing gloves while operating an angle grinder, so he will mark this first one as unsatisfactory and enter in a comment. With each response, he's able to add in a comment, a photo, and or a corrective action. He noticed that some paint cans weren't being stored properly, so he notes this one as unsatisfactory and adds in a photo and a comment. If he wanted to add in a corrective action, he could do so here, and it would be sent directly to the person he assigns it to. When he's finished, he signs the form and clicks complete. At this point, any corrective actions he created will be sent to their respective people, and this form will be viewable in history. So that, that's just a, a, a short um, sample of the type of things. What's really nice um, is as we uh, develop best practices, let's say, you know, already today, I think we're going to talk about three people are targeting uh, you know, habit uh, for humanity. And um, if there's a common checklist for, say, job site evaluation, it can all be shared, put in our library. It can be pulled by any one of the um, uh, volunteers uh, anywhere across the country. And so I think there's a lot of potential here for us and um, a lot of solutions um, for the nonprofits that we're looking to help. And it's, you know, if you think about it, it could be even used for them for even non-safety related activities if they need to communicate a policy on um, workplace, uh, you know, harassment, and they want to post it and make sure everybody reads it and signs it. It gives them now a, a mechanism and a platform to do that where they can track all their employees and, and uh, get that message out. So, you know, I see a lot of upside and uh, a lot of solutions um, that, that, you know, will benefit from this. Um, that, that their example just made me think of Nancy and the solvent storage um, and those photos that you were talking about and, the, you know, and, and the chance to even just do something like upload a photo of that and share it with people is so beneficial. So with that, I think, you know, this is a great example of how we partnered with someone. Um, they've come to help us um, and uh, they're giving this to us pro bono and we're giving it to all nonprofits pro bono. So it, it's, it's, it's a great example of partnerships. And we're working on so many partnerships. And with that, let's go to the next slide and I'll hand it back to Jack um, to tell you about some of the deep work that's going on on the partner development side. Hey, thank you, Stephen. Uh, well done. And um, yeah, over the last year, we've uh, in particular, in terms of growing our organization and our impact, uh, we reached out through uh, several CEOs of um, the AIHA, ASSP, and ACGIH. They introduced us to about 30 different organizations that, that work in the space of occupational health and safety. And as a result, 
they introduced us, recommended us as um, a vital part of the Occupational Safety and Health Network, encouraged them to engage with us. And we had um, pretty much immediate response from the uh, American Biological Safety Association, uh, the National Safety Council. Uh, we signed a memorandum of under understanding with APSA. Uh, the Board of Certified Safety Professionals recently partnering with us hosted an introductory webinar. There were 250 participants in that webinar. Uh, we obtained 50 new volunteers where, you know, this is what really pushed us to the, the Wombat uh, platform for managing our, our volunteers and the administration was all the response there. Uh, so, um, you know, this is one of the ways that we're growing. Yellowbird uh, is a, a for-profit consulting firm, and we've entered into an agreement with them. They've got 5,000 um, consultants. We're trying to increase our visibility. Uh, we have a shared uh, mission in that we want to support nonprofits with pro bono services. So we, we partnered with Yellowbird. More to come on that. So um, again, if, if uh, we're in the process of um, also discussions with OSHA and entering into an alliance agreement with them to give visibility again to worker health and safety in the nonprofit sector and uh, trying to have more recruits, but really deliver services to the nonprofits. Okay, next slide, please. So, um, you know, one of the things I mentioned at the start is that um, we are self-funded. Uh, we have a budget of $10,000 a year. We spend almost everything on purchasing professional liability insurance. Um, our current bank account is about two and a half thousand dollars we just finished paying one of our insurance bills so uh, we are uh, conducting a year-end fundraising campaign we know that you are asked for funding uh, for donations to charitable organizations uh, from all kinds we also uh, are making that request so if you are able to donate at year's end we would very much appreciate that so uh, at this point again uh, we have several um, supporters who've written pretty big checks. Uh, we're hoping that um, our volunteers can um, donate $100. If you do, uh, as a token of our appreciation, you'll receive a beautiful S4NP canvas tote bag. And again, thanks to Nancy Orr for sponsoring this, um, this tote bag uh, program. So again, if, if you have the means, please donate. It's not mandatory, but uh, believe me, it'll be put to good use. Next slide. Okay, so the other call to action is spread the word. And, um, you know, I really appreciate the help from Sharon. Sharon has really helped us um, get more visibility on our LinkedIn page. Um, when we do have a posting, um, you know, and again, hopefully you can link to it. And, and Sharon, please jump in here. Uh, you know, please repost. And, um, then uh, forward information on S4MP to uh, your friends and, and uh, the local nonprofits. So uh, we're open for business uh, and we're trying to get the word out. Uh, Sharon, anything else to add on this topic? Uh, no, uh, I think you said it all. Really just, it's good to get engagement online. Um, and then uh, just as important as telling your EHS friends is telling your nonprofits so that they know that we exist and, uh, let them know that we're, you know, available. There's a form on our website that they can fill out to ask for our assistance. So no matter where they are, uh, they can fill that out and we'll, we'll connect them with a volunteer. Okay. All right, excellent. So we're um, really at the point of open discussion. We use um, our, our mountain peak as really our goal. We're, you know, aspiring to really make Safety for Nonprofits, a, a national program that's available in all communities. Uh, we've had a lot of support um, and engagement. And I think the testimonials where our volunteers have been delivering services, I think just really speaks everything to what our, you know, what we're about and what we're trying to do in our communities. So with that, uh, maybe Stephen, um, if you perhaps wanna just read some of the chat and then we can open it yeah. up to others. 
Yeah, let, let, let's let's uh, kind of stream through those. And, and I think there's some interesting questions and things. So um, first, William um, uh, Shirley here uh, is looking for a speaker from for the Central PA ASSP chapter um, to get the message out. So uh, we've done a number of those ASSP chapter presentations. Um, so um, I, I live in uh, Extend PA, uh, uh, just off the turnpike. So th there's a possibility there um, for me to cover it. Jack, Jack's down here a couple times during the year. He has family. Um, Near, in between here and Hershey, so um, so well, let's talk and uh, offline and see see how we can set that up. Um, but William, um, while while we're here, um, you also mentioned that you're uh, already engaged with uh, Habitat for Humanity, and then so we have a uh, um, at least two people that have flagged uh, in the in the chat that they have a. Uh, a keen interest to connect uh, with Habitat for Humanity. I think Julie Simpson had uh, mentioned uh, that, and uh, also uh, Steve uh, Bees. So, um, any 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 comments there, uh, William, about how how that works? And and we can tell you some of the experiences we've had with them. Um, Jack Jack has been involved in you know, initiatives and so of other executive committee members trying to connect with them w once in Ohio, but also on the national level. Um, but they, uh, on, a, on a national level, we, we just hadn't been able to connect with that uh, safety director they have. And then there was uh, some changes in roles. Uh, right, Jack? You're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so the, uh, you, you probably know that there's a, uh, besides the Habitat for Humanity International, um, the, the corporate headquarters, there's 1,100 independent affiliates with, uh, with Habitat. So there's really a lot of opportunity for each of our volunteers to reach out uh, I know the habitat in our area in the Boston is the North Central Massachusetts. And, um, you know, we're trying to get out on a build site and help them at their restores. So there's habitat is a, a real good organ. You know, it's much easier to work on the local level with them because they're, they're all independent. They've all got their board of directors. You know, it's a little unclear how much direction they get from central. You don't need permission from corporate you know, to help out locally. So, um, you know, please, please work those. And someday we hope to uh, be able to go and uh, knock on the door and have a bigger impact. And, and uh, Bill, maybe you can help us do that in the future. Well, one, one thought I have is instead of trying to work through um, the, the international corporate office, in, we, <clears throat> is to approach the insurance end of it. I've actually done uh, some uh, underwriter surveys for Lockton and the, the insurance end, which is very, very active, very interested. And I've probably done a dozen different affiliates through that, aside from my, my personal local connection with the local affiliate. Um, and so maybe the approach should be on the insurance side and not uh, down in uh, Georgia. Yeah, I, I, I think you bring up a good point. And I, what I would suggest is we collect the names of those who are interested in doing this. We have a little brainstorming and uh, decide what we're going to do and go off and do it. Um, so I like your ideas. And then um, somebody, I think Dave, you you had raised the issue around connecting with the city chamber of commerce uh, to kind of source out um, nonprofits. Um, you want to talk to that at all, or 
thanks, Steve. Uh, no, actually, I was just saying I just thought about that. Has anybody used uh, the, a local venue like that in the past to get the list of nonprofits uh, being down here in Texas? Uh, you know, really excited about the opportunity, but uh, just looking for uh, ways to maybe get people that are already connected with nonprofits to give you that list was what my thought was. Yeah. So I, 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 I know just from some research we've done that it, it, it's almost really amazing. Um, you just Google nonprofits in uh, and, and name the County or name the state and um, scroll down through after you get through the sponsorship stuff. Um, you, you will quickly find that there are published lists of nonprofits um, and, and there are um, databases that you can go in and actually uh, look up nonprofits. Um, I think a number of different ways by, by state, by county, by postal code, it, 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 it is a number of different venues and and there are some national databases that out there that you can find um but but again that you know um some sometimes the connections like Sharon and 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 Nancy are uh you know uh, spoke to it it's it's just getting the word out to the community um reposting the posts and someone you already know Many people are involved in in, in nonprofit work, um, and it it could be just by publicly starting to advocate this, people will reach out and connect and find you as well. So um, it's it's just you know I think Jack always says is if you if there's something you're passionate about. ASPC, your church, uh, a food bank um, down the street. Just, just be bold and reach out. All right, thank you, sir, for the encouragement, and thanks to William and Don. I see their chat notes as well, so appreciate it. Yeah, I think that covers the majority of the topical areas, Jack, and, and you got your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I see uh, Stephen Hemperley uh, out, out of California. He said, I would be glad to make an announcement about S4MP at next week's AIHA Northern California section meeting, if that'd be helpful. Um, and I believe that maybe Kerry Gurman from Southern California uh, is on the call. But yeah, let's... Um, this is what we like you to do. We can uh, give you a couple of slides or, you know, some uh, speaking points. Uh, but this is how we get the word out. And uh, California is reforming uh, now that Kerry German has moved from Arizona to uh, California. Uh, we're going to have a little, little bit of more California teamwork. And, um, you know, I also see Stephen in your other chat note uh, um, that um, you're wondering if there are others in, in the Northern California area. And yes, there are. And uh, let's get you connected up with Kerry Gurman um, and, and we can get, get you the roster of who's who so that uh, you can get some colleagues uh, working on some projects. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Yeah, did Julie also. <laughs> open open mic time. I know that Don Ellswick has always got, you know, great wisdom and insight. So um, I don't know if uh, there's uh, opportunities or breakthroughs that you've, you've had, Don. Anything to share with us? You know, the biggest thing that's going to occur, and you guys are going to get kind of an advance on this, and I know AIHA is looking to really roll this out. For nonprofits, I'm having a lot of people ask about heat stress. 
and we know that's a big issue with volunteers, there's going to be an app coming out that should hit about the time of their conference. So for people that are struggling with heat stress and those issues, I have a couple of nonprofits that want that. Please don't hesitate to ask Jack or the board members or myself to give them ideas. And there's a series of simple shows or you know, micro learnings, things like that. So Jack, I just, I just wanted to add that. I know a couple of nonprofits, especially Habitat, I had one of the local people reach out and that really slowed them down where I'm located in the Southeast. So that's my only wisdom of the day, except have a great holiday season. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks for that. You, uh, Don's been a big supporter. Don, Don gets invited to speak to lots of different groups. And he, I know he's always making a little pitch, um, and, and he's uh, been responsible for recruiting a lot of uh, folks to us. Okay. Open mic time. Anything else before we adjourn? We're, we've got about three minutes. We can give you three minutes back. What do you think, Sharon and Stephen? Shall we declare victory and uh, adjourn the meeting? I think so. Thanks, everyone. For okay. Being here. Hey, thank you. Thanks for volunteering. Have a great holidays, everyone. Bye now. Thank you. Bye now.